I think now we can move on into our program with our guest. And Ivan, I'm going to let you introduce Jeannie and, and ask her some questions. Well, thank you, Marge, and good morning, <laughs> Foxwood Springs. We're happy today to have with us our city clerk of the city of Raymoor. And her name is Jeannie Warner. And we're going to ask Jeannie how long she has been with the city of uh, Raymoor and what positions you have held there. Uh, and then you can give us more detail about your duties. Well, good morning and thank you, Ivan. Thank you, panel. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I have actually, my total employment with the city, <coughs> excuse me, has been 21 years. I began in 1994 as a part-time receptionist, a housewife and mother looking for an extra duty to do. <laughs> I began working somewhat with utility billing. In um, 1997, I was transferred to the municipal court and I served as a deputy court clerk. In 2001, I moved to the administration department, working under the city administrator was our form of government at that time, and to the city clerk. Shortly thereafter, then I was appointed as deputy city clerk. In 2008, upon the retirement of Susie Nefco, the city clerk at that time, I was appointed as the city clerk and have served the mayor and council and city staff in the capacity of a city clerk since 2008. Um, I've lived in the city since 1992. I'm very, very proud of being a resident here. I've enjoyed seeing the growth and being a part of that and truly enjoy the public service that I offer to the city and the residents. <clears throat> Could you tell us some of the duties that you uh, perform as city clerk? The main duty of the city clerk's office, of course, is the uh, record retention for the city to assist the citizens in research of ordinances, um, past minutes of council action, and so forth. Um, we do host an annual record destruction program of the records and then maintain permanent records. We currently digitize and microfilm all permanent records of the city on an annual basis. Uh, it's a big job. I enjoy it. Um, the city clerk's office also attends all city council meetings providing the official record of all actions of the council. We also um, issue all of our occupational licenses. Those are not only for the businesses located in Raymoor, but the contractors who come from outside the city to work in, in our city limits. I issue liquor licenses, fireworks permits, administer the local elections, working with the county election authority. We also provide all training and travel for mayor and council and city employees. We prepare the list goes on forever, Ivan. I know, go ahead. <laughs> I want people to know what the city clerk mm -hmm. does because it's a big job. Mm -hmm. We also prepare the e-packets or council packets for meetings. Council meets the second and fourth Mondays of the month in regular session, the first and third in work sessions. We're responsible for compiling all the information submitted from department heads and dispersing that information to the mayor and council and department heads for the city. We might mention the fact that you were one of the first cities in the area to have electronic packages for the council prior to their meetings. Correct, and that is without any special software um, <laughs> to reduce the costs. It, to me now, it's a simple process using um, the Adobe PDF. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, we did in the past. We had hosted the city clerk from the city of Kansas City actually came to review our processes um, from Parkville, Harrisonville. And then we also reviewed our processes when um, Jeff Cox was elected to the Cass County Commissioner so that he could review our internal processes on on how that pro and on how we assembled the documents. And so at the current time, uh, thanks to the city of Raymore, the 
County of Cass is now online with their e-packets, mm -hmm. which gives the citizens of Cass County the opportunity to go online and read what the uh, Cass County Commissioners are doing. I have a question. When you, uh, when you put forth the permits, for example, someone comes in and wants a construction, to be a construction person in our community, and you offer permits, is there any background check done at that time? We don't perform background checks, however, um, a few years ago, working with the Building Inspection Department, we did implement a contractor licensing program. And that works hand in hand with the occupational license. Mm -hmm. um, we do require all contractors to provide the city with a certificate of insurance mm -hmm. showing that they hold the proper, um, not only liability coverage, but also mm -hmm. they're compliant with the state workers' comp laws. Mm -hmm. as well. Um, depending on what grade of contractor they are, we require a contractor license and what that is is testing through a national testing center or one of the local agencies that is very active in licensing is Johnson County, Kansas. Mm -hmm. So they're required to maintain their education every year and provide that information with their license. Okay. Right. So, also, a roofer. Would you explain the liquor licensing process <laughs> yeah. and uh, the restrictions that you must yeah. follow. The liquor licenses are issued on an annual basis. We're concurrent with the state laws as far as expiration. Um, each year, we currently have about 18 licenses. Um, that comes before council usually in May for a public hearing and it's council's determination that each business um, a, on staff recommendation has presented the proper documentation to accompany their, their application. Um, their separation distance for existing license isn't an issue, um, but if a new application does come in, there are certain distance requirements from a school, a church, etc. cetera. Um, and we don't issue the license until a uh, local business has also complied with the state regulations. Um, the last couple of years it's been a little bit of a challenge because the state has closed all of the local um, agent offices. So we have to refer to Jefferson City, which has slowed down a little <laughs> bit of the process, not only for the applicants, mm -hmm. but for staff to verify the proper information. And these licenses are granted to retailers of uh, liquor products? Yes, yes, in, a in addition to restaurants mm -hmm. and uh, package sales. <coughs> well, uh, I know you have some other duties there you're prepared to share with us. I have one more to yes. ask. About. Do, you, do you put out gun permits? Those are handled through the police department. I see, okay. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. <laughs> Not that I'm planning on getting one, but I just wondered. <laughs> well, actually, if it's a concealed carry, it's through the state, but the police department has some hand in it. If, if it's not my office, I'm not going to approach <laughs> <laughs> okay. other information. Don't touch it. <laughs> I understand. Um, I have to say this year I've been very proud of my accomplishments. I've been very active in not only our international organization for city clerks who boasts over 9,000 members in the United mm -hmm. States and 1,000 members in 13 foreign countries. Um, I've made my, maintained my membership with that organization as well as our state Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association. Um, as a new clerk many years ago, I never thought that I would be <laughs> president of our organization this upcoming year. Um, I began, I was active with our division within our state organization, serving as secretary, president-elect, and president, and then moved to a division director, which is a liaison between our local members and our state executive board. Um, in 2012, I decided that I would submit my statement of interest to serve the organization as treasurer. The following year, 
I made the decision to continue my devotion to the organization. Um, was elected to secretary this last year. I have served as president-elect and will begin my term of president May 1st of this year. So very I'm, I'm very proud to have done that. Never thought that I would develop the leadership needed, but I'm very proud that I have. Very good. Well, we're proud of you, Jeannie. Yes, I should Thank say. Thank you. Uh, I was, uh, as the municipal clerk for the city of Kansas City, uh, Missouri, I was uh, active in the uh, early days of the certification program. Would you explain something about the certification program at this time? I'll begin with the state certification. In, I believe it was 2000, 2001, um, our education before that time was dependent on your membership and active education through the international organization. Um, at that time, the state of Missouri had a very forward-thinking board and committee to develop our own state of Missouri education program. At that time, I believe there were only two or three other states that had formed their own independent education program. Um, within the state of Missouri, we have several levels. Um, you begin your membership of two years attending conferences, gathering a 100-hour professional development certificate, and after meeting certain criteria, not only in education, but professional experience, you can apply for entry into the Missouri Registered City Clerks Association. Um, we're full of acronyms, so that's known as MRCC. Um, from there, then you move up through two levels. This is not a quick <coughs> process. It takes many, many years to move through those, those levels. Then your final designation is a Missouri Professional City Clerk, which is an MPCC. Um, I have held that since 2011, and I also hold, when, you know, once you've reached past your highest designation, you continue to strive to, to gain knowledge and move forward. So I, in 2014, was awarded a 600-hour certificate of professional development. Um, I'm not sure what the record is within the organization, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> you may hold it. <laughs> years ago, I, uh, the, the city clerk from Independence, Bruce Lowry, when I was a young clerk, uh, received his 500-hour, and to me that was just amazing. Uh -huh. I, I had no idea the, the devotion that it takes to get that. Bruce Lowry and I were the, the uh, original committee for that program in the state of Missouri. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> will you tell us something about your continuing ed program at, uh, with the different uh, universities uh, throughout the state? Our current education is hosted through Missouri State University. We have an education director that works very, very closely with our executive board as well as our education committee. We have um, two conferences every year for the state level. Um, March is considered our spring institute. Um, we have instituted extra training and what that entails is called a master academy which is more advanced training or professional development. Uh, that is usually a half a day on a Sunday. It's, it's devotion mm -hmm. to, to spend that extra time away from your, your Sunday activities and your family. And then Monday of conference is another full day master academy um, for the clerks. We've instituted a new clerks academy that all new clerks coming to the organization have specialized training uh, the conference continues through the Thursday with a myriad of, of classes, different topics, um, some as basic as election laws, liquor laws. We have a legislative update that's provided through our Missouri Municipal League just to keep clerks on track of upcoming legislation that may affect their cities and then their functions as city clerks. And you also meet with the Missouri Municipal League occasionally? We do. That's our second conference of the year is typically September, October. Um, it's held, we have another Master Academy which is a full day in advance of the Missouri Municipal League Conference. 
um, the city clerks, the state association hosts two separate classes, um, not only for city clerks, but for municipal officials if they're interested in attending. Then we also, I, I guess I forgot about the third one, is um, our state regional training, which typically is in the fall. It's held in three different locations of the state, the Kansas City area, the St. Louis area, and usually in the mid-state Columbia. And uh, that is a two-day training, also more advanced of uh, the typical basic training. So those are two-day classes that are held there. Do are any of the communities still having their city clerks uh, elected? Yes. Yes, it, it depends on their class of city, if they have a charter form of gov government. Um, by our charter in Raymore, the city clerk's position is appointed by the city manager with the advice and consent of the mayor and council. Mm -hmm. So my direct um, supervisor is the city <laughs> manager, but yes, a lot of a lot of the cities are elected positions. Some of the clerks work directly for the mayor and council. Some, of course, mm -hmm. for the city administrator or city manager, depending on their form of government. Mm -hmm. So those people might change often. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, to run by election, it would be challenging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The city clerk's position is a very important position because it remains pretty much constant in most cities, unless it is an elected position. Mm -hmm. But as an appointed position, it remains pretty constant as long as the clerk is able to perform the duties. Mm -hmm. And in our case, we have had an outstanding opportunity for uh, Jeannie Werner. She has been with us for a good many years in different capacities, and now as our city clerk, and we're very fortunate to have you in that position. Would you tell us something about your deputy? Because I know it, it's because you have a deputy that you're able to be away from your office occasionally. Yes. Uh, my deputy's name is Erica Hill. She has been with the city nearly two years now. Um, and it is. A, you need a great support system. Someone who can step up in your shoes and perform these duties with accuracy. And it, it's very comforting to know that you have a trusted employee. So she, she is a great asset, uh, offers great support to me in those times that I'm out of the office or assigned to special projects um, that I can go away or perform with ease and not have the worry of being behind or <laughs> having to be contacted while out of town, etc. <laughs> because your duties uh, come up every day, every, every day. Every day, every day, eight to five, sometimes mm -hmm. a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if everyone is aware, I did a little bit of research on the history of the city clerk, and it's one of the oldest public servants, mm -hmm. along with the tax collector. <laughs> um, the profession traces back to biblical times. <laughs> I'm sure that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they were the early keepers of the archives. Mm -hmm. um, before pen and paper, they were known as remembrancers oh, wow. because they had mm. to remember, mm -hmm. they had to rely on their memory <laughs> oh, of actions mm -hmm. and uh, laws that were passed. Uh, I, th I found that very, I found that very interesting. <laughs> yes, I'd say. And in early New England, uh, there was a carryover from uh, the old world, mm -hmm. they called the the clerk, the town clerk, uh -huh. uh, Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E, uh -huh. town clerk. Uh -huh. I thought that was interesting, too. <laughs> Goes way back, that's, that's for sure. Well, I'm glad you don't have to try to remember all of the activities that the city council takes, uh, actions and so forth, uh, because I would think that sometimes there memory might not be the best. Well, in, in this case, um, uh, and this has been going on for a good many years, uh, tell her how you record those minutes so that you <laughs> don't have to remember everything. We've ha <clears throat> had a lot of evolution in that, in that department. Oh, I bet. <laughs> um, when I began with city clerk, as deputy, I also would attend city council meetings 
to assist the city clerk. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the pen and paper, trying to keep up <laughs> with the cramp yes. in your hand over the hours uh, to record at least the basic information. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved then to a recorder, at, commonly at that time known mm -hmm. as a transcription machine. Mm -hmm and mm -hmm. then would listen to with the foot pedal, trying to compose <laughs> the minutes after the fact, going back and forth, catching the discussion. Um, currently now we have gone to, uh, it's not a verbatim minute, it, it's a summary minutes, unless uh, discussion is a result of any outcome of a motion or a vote in the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, our minutes now are done electronically most of my minutes are prepared and finished before the council meeting even begins. I work from a workstation, a keyboard, and a monitor. Um, I, like I said, I, I work up about two hours before a council meeting to prepare those minutes, um, listing the motions on, on my best guess and the votes on my best guess. And uh, usually within an hour or two, depending on the, the content of the meeting, Mm -hmm. um, within an hour or two, the next day, the minutes are completed. That's Well, that's great. Yes, that is great. <laughs> I know in the city of Kansas City, we had to employ a professional uh, Court stenographer, or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, stenotype. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would, uh, mm -hmm. it would take forever and a day for us to get the transcript. Mm, and the lawyers would be standing on one foot and another <laughs> wanting the, the transcript. Uh -huh. But we couldn't get the transcript to them for at least a week. Mm. And here she has them when the, by the time the meeting's over. For the most part. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I wanted to talk about a couple of upcoming projects that the city clerk's office will be involved in. Good. Um, last year I chaired a committee called a website review committee. Uh, we had five on our committee and our purpose and goal was to examine our website, tear it apart in pieces, determine what could be improved, how could we update, and streamline information. Um, and all of that was just a staff function that was without mm -hmm. any additional costs in software, etc. cetera. Um, this year, the council has budgeted for a new platform for the city's website. I will be co-chairing a committee with the new assistant city manager, Meredith Hawk. I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity to meet with her yet. We haven't. Okay. Um, the, the new platform will remain with our current Civic Plus host. Um, we'll work to identify citizen needs, how we can even further improve transparency to the citizens and those accessing our website. Uh, one, of the, one of the things in our website review committee that we did work on was consistency on how the information was listed on the website. Something as simple as how a date structure was used so it was consistently listed, easier to find. Um, we did a lot of evaluation as far as that, that goes. Um, we transferred from the typical, what's called FAQs, or frequently asked questions, to a more streamlined, modern, uh, how do I? So uh, someone researching on the website mm -hmm. can now find answers to their questions using our how do I function. Um, those are broken out by departments. We've tried not to duplicate a lot of material, but at least if someone's familiar with one portion of the website, they can find very easily at their fingertips that same information without clicking and searching and becoming frustrated, <laughs> <laughs> as oh, websites that's, tend to be. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's well, the great. website today is, is very, uh, very workable, um, but I can understand why you need to be a little more uh, fine-tuning. But uh, that information that we talk about, the minutes and the ordinances and the um, <laughs> Summary of the ordinances, that's all on the website. Uh, everything that the council handles is now on the website. And it's generally put there by the city clerk uh, uh, a few days in advance of the meeting. Yes, uh, the, the council packet materials are available 
no later than mid-afternoon on the Thursday before a Monday meeting, and that applies not only to council meetings, the regular sessions, but work sessions as well. Um, the approved minutes are posted within the first hour of the meeting the day after a council meeting for regular session. Uh, we try to be very prompt in that. Um, are also available on the city website is our city code and charter. Um, I typically do updates to the city code three times a year um, and that is a result of any action passed by council that amends any portion of the city code. And working with our code provider municipal code, um, those are done three times a year. Try to keep it as current as possible. The ordinances, as Ivan has indicated, are in the council packet in draft form. So it, anyone can view. We, we strive to be transparent to our citizens. Mm -hmm. um, another portion of our website is a notify me that is available for citizens, residents, anyone to sign up for who can pick and choose what information they would write, like to see notification uh, delivered to them via email, a mobile device, um, which can be very informative. It's anything from council meeting, park board meeting, commission meetings, agendas, minutes, to bid projects, to parks events. Uh, that, that's a great asset to the citizens to sign up for that information and have it at their fingertips delivered right to them at their choice. Mm -hmm. one, one good thing about the website is that we not only get the ordinances, but we get the background information for the ordinance, mm -hmm. including all the correspondence that's related to that ordinance. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the city is really working hard to make their uh, city government transparent. And that's true now in Cass County. Sounds to me like you have a, have a job that has a lot of deadlines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some very strict deadlines. Yes, yes. Uh, I can currently, see that. right now, we are, our, our biggest function right now is the renewal of occupational licenses. Those do run by the calendar year. Mm -hmm. My best guess mm -hmm. is we renew about a thousand licenses. Again, mm -hmm. those are not only for businesses in Raymore, but contractors coming in. Uh, we've seen an, an increase in the trend of home based businesses. Um, so right now, that's our biggest function. Uh, those expired December 31st, so we'll continue with our next step to notify those businesses uh, that haven't renewed of the responsibilities they have to comply with the city code. What kind of home <coughs> businesses are we talking about? Um, some of them as simple as internet sales, I think seems to be uh -huh. okay. um, mm. the biggest of the trend. Yeah. Um, graphic design, uh -huh. home office, their own, their own home business. There's some okay. restrictions for home-based businesses that I won't go into. Those are under the Community Development Department. But we do work closely, closely with the department to ensure compliance with city code on those types of businesses. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On your liquor licenses, uh, are you required by the state to run a uh, check on their um, criminal record? Uh, we do not at the city. Um, that that requirement w was removed several years ago because of the costs of running um, those background checks. We are, however, moving forward considering the fact of revisions to our liquor code that would place that responsibility to the applicant to provide the city with a background check um, to be submitted with renewal of their liquor license or upon application of a new license. Would that be true also with the licensed gun dealers in the city? Uh, you know, as I said earlier, that's more of a police department function on mm -hmm. uh, for the licensed gun dealers. Um, and I'm not sure, to be honest, what their requirements are in the police department okay. for well, that. Well, our chief will be with us next week, so we'll ask, uh, save that question. <laughs> Good for question for chief, her. Uh, chief Jan Zimmerman. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, well, we, we really appreciate you coming and giving us this information. Uh, you know, a job like the city clerk um, could be uh, anything a lot in, in a lot of places, but you certainly have narrowed it down for what, what it is here, and, and I'm sure that we're very fortunate to have someone who's 
gone ahead with her education and all uh, like you have. And uh, we appreciate the fact that you're doing a good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Like I said, I, I truly enjoy being a public servant. I like pleasing the people, supplying them with the information that they need as fastly as possible. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not a job that I would like because I don't like that many deadlines. <laughs> and one good thing about our city government in the city of Raymore is nonpartisan. And so uh, uh, partisan politics doesn't play a large part in the city of Raymore, and that's great because I worked in a highly political environment in Kansas City, Missouri. And I, although I was appointed, um, my appointment was sometimes a little iffy. <laughs> because there would be someone else who wanted my job. Hmm. 